What's good? Welcome in. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report. You're watching us right here on Chat Sports, and I'm your host, Chase Sr. We are approaching 80,000 subscribers, so if you want videos every single day and to be a part of our mailbags, please make sure you lock us in and subscribe. And a reminder, watch party coming your way on Sunday for the NFC Championship game. We begin with this one from Steven Sierra as we open up the floor from our subscribers to ask us questions. Chase, what up, dog? Go 49ers. It's Niner time. It's Niner time. It's been Niner time and during this incredible 12-game winning streak, and we'll see if it continues with a Super Bowl berth as well. Davis with the $2 donation. If the Niners win, I will super chat $50 on Sunday. Appreciate that, Davis. And in that case, it's going to be an awesome game. Hopefully the Niners are able to get that dub, and I hope that you join us, even if you don't send in a donation. But all of you who do, we, of course, appreciate the support. Mother Trucker. $5 donation, bang, bang, Niner gang. Byron McCants, majority of the analysts are talking about the Niners' defense like they're an average defense because of Jalen Hurts' running ability. Well, can we compare the Eagles' offense and the Niners' defense here? Because that's why you don't listen to other analysts out there because all throughout the week, we have not been disrespecting this 49ers' defense, and you know I'm always going to keep it real with you. But this is a great matchup with what the Eagles do well offensively against what the Niners do well defensively. And it's going to be a terrific matchup for those reasons and beyond, on top of the fact that both of these teams chock full with talent. But maybe a lot of analysts out there think that the Eagles' offense has the edge over San Francisco because they look at these numbers. Points per game for Philly this year, almost 29 points per. Second in the NFL. They were third in yards per game, third in points per play. Third and third down conversion rate. Oftentimes, in a matchup that's on an evil, even playing field, excuse me, money downs can determine it. So third and fourth downs, Philadelphia very good. Number three and number four on third and fourth downs. Red zone scoring percentage in terms of scoring touchdowns. Eagles, when they get in the red area, 20-yard line to the goal line, they score a touchdown nearly 69% of the time. That's excellent. Touchdowns per game atop the league. Yards per rush, nearly five. That's 10th. And as for what San Francisco does defensively, I don't think that they're an average unit. Going back to that question. I think they're actually legit. And they do have the recipe to stop and halt this Eagles offense. I believe they have a physicality level at the line of scrimmage. I think that their linebacking core could play a huge role in this game with their speed vertically and sideline to sideline. And the 49ers overall talent on the defensive side of the ball and what they do schematically I think matches up well in trying to come up with ways to have this Eagles offense sputter so who you got in this game NFC title game right to make it the Super Bowl 57 PHI for the Eagles SF for the San Francisco 49ers let us know your predictions down below in the comment section a lot of great questions that we still want to get to on today's show but first 49ers Report today is presented and sponsored by Geology. This is a company that has helped me look good, feel good, and perform well on camera. Geology, a 16-time award-winning skin, hair, and body care company recognized in Men's Health, GQ, and Esquire. They create simple and effective skin care and hair care routines customized just for you with ingredients that are proven to work. And right now, limited time only, they're hooking up the faithful with an absolutely insane offer. Use our code CHATSPORTS70 at chatsports.com slash geology or use the QR code on screen that we showed you and they will give you an exclusive 70% off of their award-winning skincare trial set. Skincare shouldn't feel like a gamble, and geology is the best in the skincare game. They put an end to darker, puffy under eyes. They help you fight acne, reduce oiliness, prevent wrinkles, and gives you smoother, hydrated skin. I've been using their face wash in the mornings, their dark and puffy under eye cream, and retinal night cream at night. So head to chatsports.com slash geology. Scan that QR code on your screen here. Use our code CHATSPORTS70. That link is in the comment section as well as the description of this video. And on top of 70% off, you'll receive an exclusive bonus offer on one of their brand new skin, hair, and body products of your choice when you add it to your trial. Another Super Chat coming in. This time, it's from the OG, the legend, John Wallace. So we let Charvarius Ward play A.J. Brown straight up like he did D.K. Metcalf and see how he fares so that way we don't get stretched thin and Talano Hufonga can see the field better. Hufonga does struggle in pass coverage. Yes, he was named an AP All-Pro. 
He does remind you a lot of Troy Palomalu around the line of scrimmage, but against an offense like this for Philly, with some of the pre-snap motion and some of the creativity and the route concepts and the dual threat nature of this offense for the Eagles, Talano Hufonga can get confused. And I am of the belief that you always want to start off the game one-on-one -on -one coverage with your corners to see how they hold up. If they continue to struggle, of course, then you shield protection over that side and on that side with some safety help. Or you decide to match up maybe Diamador Lenore against an A.J. Brown. At some point, you might have to throw that double team and straight up double team as compared to having that safety kind of hover over top. So I agree. Let Ward play A.J. Brown straight up. See who wins the battle like they did D.K. Metcalf. Yes, Ward did get burned by D.K. Metcalf. But you got to fuel this game out in that regard. BK from the Bay, do you think that we will have any troubles containing Jalen Hurts? It's tough to say. San Francisco, no doubt, going to have to have pass rush lane integrity. They can't get out of control in trying to bring them down. And when they rush, it's important for them to set the edge. I like what D'Amico likes to do with some of the twist stunts up front. I do think that's also a recipe that could confuse the Eagles offensively as well as Jalen Hurts because he's not able to see things in the same manner if it's a little bit different from what it was pre-snap as compared to post-snap when you have the twist stunts or you show that blitz and you drop back guys in coverage and Jalen Hurts isn't able to see, okay, I'm definitely going to be able to go here with the football. But containing him, set the edge and maintain the edge, and then when you do get that pass rush, be aware that he could slip through, and something that Jalen Hurts likes to do a lot, every time he does sense that pressure, always rolls out to the right. DC Supernova, do the dual stream, man. That'd be dope for us Niner fans to interact with Eagles fans, and it's better to see you, Chase, have fun. I do appreciate that, DC Supernova, and Eagles, Niners, dual stream watch party could be a blast to pit the Niners report up against Philadelphia Eagles now to see who gets more views, who picks up more subscribers, who drives Super Chats, and which team at the end of the day comes up victorious in Philadelphia and here at the Chat Sports Studios. So let's hear from you, your thoughts on an Eagles-Niners dual live stream. Don't you want to go up against Eagles fans, chop it up a little bit, have a nice little back and forth? Because competition brings the best out of everybody. Then it's the entire crew me included, being here on the live stream. Either way, we'll be live for a watch party here on the Niners Report, no doubt about it. H for happy, M for Matt. John B, $5 Super Chat. I live in South Jersey. Beating the Eagles is a must. Eagles fans are talking lots of trash and about as bad as Cowgirls fans. Nobody is as bad as Cowgirls fans. They're the worst. Every year is their year to win a Super Bowl, yet we're going on nearly three decades in which they haven't made it past the second round of the NFL playoffs, the NFC Championship game. Now, are Eagles fans confident? Yeah. Some I talk to, though, understand that this team is really legit. During our live show, looking at the poll, more difficult matchup for the Niners, 75% on the Eagles, 25% with the Dallas Cowboys, and the Cowboys posed a very stiff test. For San Francisco. Debo Samuel even said it's the best defense we've seen all year and I have confidence in Brock Purdy after he faced a very good Cowboys defense that he's going to be ready to go in the NFC Championship game. So 76% of the votes now on the Eagles over the Cowboys. The respect factor is certainly there. Words of wisdom, Eagles, Apollo Creed, Rocky Balboa in Philly too. For those not familiar, Apollo Creed. Oh wait, what would you say? Eagles Apollo Creed, Brock equals Rocky Balboa. Okay, I see what you did there. I got confused with the equal signs. Yeah, so Apollo Creed went down to Rocky Balboa in Rocky II. So words of wisdom, making that pop culture reference right there. 63 Hunter, who do you see as the breakout player for the Niners? Jawan Jennings had a big touchdown against the Eagles in week two last year. He could be a big third down option because when you game plan against San Francisco, you're focusing on trying to lock down Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, McCaffrey, sometimes Elijah Mitchell, which then leads to Jawan Jennings getting free on a big third down. So a breakout player, it could be him. I'm trying to think of somebody defensively. Dre Greenlaw, Zizal Shire, Fred Warner have been awesome all year. 
Deshaun Gibson, breakout player potentially. Jonathan Lamont, next up. What up, Chase? Will Mike McGlinchey be a problem for us against the Eagles pass rush? What do you think? He could be. He got thrown to the ground and just owned by Micah Parsons. He was horizontal to the grass. You don't see that often for a guy who's well over 300 pounds. And for Mike McGlinchey, it's not going to get a lot easier this upcoming week. Hassan Reddick finished second in the NFL in sacks this year behind only Nick Bosa, 16 in the regular season, now has 17 and a half in 18 games, including the playoffs. It's going to be a tall test. Philadelphia finished with 70 sacks this year, 15 more than any other team in the NFL. They had four players with 10 or more sacks this year. So they're really, really good. If you want to interact with me, feel free to do so. Twitter and Instagram, at Chase underscore senior. We can continue to chop it up, talk all things Niners.